Hi, I'm Don Dodge, and this is Google Root Access. Today, we're going to talk about advisory boards. Should your startup have an advisory board? Who do you look for to uh, find on that advisory board? And just how do you do it? My guest today is David Gurley. David has been on both sides of the table. He's been an advisor to several companies, and he's been a CEO who has built his own advisory board. So welcome, David. Thank you for having me today, Don. Great to have you here. You're CEO of Perzo. Yes, a, indeed. A new company. So it's about, how old is the company? Well, uh, since September 2012. Okay. Uh, so only about six months. And do you have an advisory board? I do, actually. I have four people in my advisory board today. So why, uh, why do you get an advisory board? You're an experienced executive. You've been around big companies and startups. Why do you need an advisory board? I think, you know, any, any new venture um, is, um, has to bring together a number of um, talents and experiences and assets. Um, nobody uh, can have it all. Um, clearly, the team that you are building in your organization has to have anything that helps you to get the product uh, to the market. Um, but even that is not sufficient. Um, you need to go and reach out to other experiences, um, complementary ones, sometimes supplementary ones, so that you got always the full picture, the full information before you make a decision. And uh, that's the reason I went and sought the advice of uh, these four excellent uh, people. Uh, and do you look for general advice or do you pick, uh, if you have four advisors, yes. so do you pick, pick one who's great at uh, marketing and sales and do you pick another one who knows the financial markets and another one who uh, knows engineering or how do you decide which That's advisors? a very good question. I think first you have to look at yourself. Where you are good at and, and where you need help. Then you look at the team as the team dynamics come true. You know, where is your team really strong at and where they can get better. Um, and then you look at your market. Where are you going to go? Are you going to be an enterprise? You know, startup, or you're going to be a consumer startup, or an infrastructure startup. Depending on uh, all those elements, you have to pick the right people to complement you, and this is really the important thing. There's a complementarity around that. Uh, so, in my case, you know, this is my first startup. Um, you know, I have done startups in big companies, but it's very different when you're outside on your own. Uh, so, I needed the advice of people who have been in this uh, situation before, and therefore who could help me navigate uh, those hurdles. Um, I think that's number one. Number two, I think you need believers in you. You know, advisors are good for two things. First, first telling you what, to, what they will recommend given a situation, but also give you the moral boost that you need. Sometimes when you hit those bumps in the road that they tell you, look, David, it's okay. You know, you're going to walk it through. This is how it's done. And with that kind of energy that comes from your advisors, you are able to overcome a bunch of obstacles you can otherwise not. That's a very interesting point, because normally you think of advisors as giving deep professional advice on legal matters or financial matters or engineering or whatever. But CEOs also need someone that they can bounce ideas off of, things that like difficult problems that you couldn't discuss with your employees because they're too tragic or yes. uh, ultimately bad. So you use the advisors also as your sounding board, your cheerleaders, your uh, coach and mentors. Uh, and, and, and you know that's really what how I treat. Uh, and how I, I mean, I hope that uh, this comes across in, the, in this way to, towards my advisors. Is that you know I think uh, I am. I'm kind of there, you know, the, my company is kind of a, 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 a sports team, you know, maybe it's a soccer team or a football team, and the advisors are our coaches and mentors, and they've been there, they, they've done, they are specialized in different areas, um, but uh, I, can, I can use my advisors to ask things that I wouldn't ask other people, uh, because I know that the relationship is really strong, and, uh, and they are not going to judge me. Uh, and with that judgment element out of the equation, it makes the relationship much simpler, much straightforward. What comes out is not you are good or you're bad or you suck on this and you are really good at that. It is, okay, well, you have, his, you know, have, you have a difficult situation or you have a very good situation, and here are the right things to do. And this removes the old pressure that you will get, for, for example, from a regular board or from potential other investors. 
And that's what I like about surrounding the myself with advisors. Because of those things, I feel free to uh, innovate and execute. So the sports analogy is actually a very good one. A, a coach or a mentor. Yeah. Even Michael Jordan, the best basketball player in the world, needed a coach. Or Tom Brady, the quarterback of the Patriots, yeah. needs a coach. So it's uh, CEOs uh, think of themselves as invincible and, and knowing everything. But even they need coaches and mentors to help them through some of the tough times. Uh, I, absolutely true. Uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely not invincible. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we, uh, I think the, um, uh, the, the challenge for CEOs or, or wannabe founders uh, is to understand their situation well. And, and that's where I think everything starts from. You have to know what you are going to be excellent at and you have to continue to be excellent in it. If Michael Jordan was an excellent basketball player, but I'm sure that there are many other areas uh, in his professional life as a basketball player, he needed to complement himself. And that's again going back to this complementarity. The coaches are there to complement you. Some coaches in the basketball are just, you know, how do you play the game? And some people are there, how do you, what do you do when you don't play? Uh, and it is as important, you know, I have an advisor from, um, uh, a major recruitment organization, and he is actually there to tell me how to pace myself um, because I overcommit, and overcommitting, you know, is as bad as overtraining. And uh, so you need to find a balance, and that's how you surround yourself with the right group of people. So, how do you find advisors, or how do you pick them? Uh, do you shoot for the stars and try to get the best possible, most prominent, uh, famous person you can get? or do you look for someone who has deep technical or deep uh, domain knowledge? How do you choose your advisors? Um, <coughs> once you have identified the areas um, that you need help, um, and, uh, and, and before I, I give uh, more specifics, I think you need to have like a, a master advisor, you know, somebody who you can call at any time, and, uh, and that person is going to be really kind of your day in, day out person you'll interact with. Um, then the rest of the team uh, has to be you know, specific to the functions. It's, it's good to have somebody who's known in the industry um, because of two things. Because A, because they are known in the industry, they know what happens in the industry. And, and therefore, their advice is um, getting lots of information and sanitizing it and distilling it to you so you don't have to go and hunt for this information. I think that's very valuable. Um, so you need to find somebody who is a maven, who is a kind of a hub uh, in, in the world of, uh, of advisors, potential advisors, and also who's got that, um, that human touch that you can connect with. You know, a, a big name might be an excellent idea, but if you can't connect with that person, I don't think it's going to be useful because it's a personal relationship, first and foremost. And, and that's, I think, criteria number one. Criteria number two is, uh, there are lots of people, um, you know, in the in the in the, in the Silicon Valley and, and other places where uh, enterprises are created, who are willing to give advice, but nobody asks them. <laughs> 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 Seriously, and uh, <coughs> and so they all shoot for the stars, but there are lots of plenty of stars that sometimes you can't see with the visible eye, but you put a telescope, you can. And I think the analogy is similar here. There are lots of people with great experience that you can go and get help from. Uh, and you need to network with people. You know, you need to do not hesitate to ask. You see somebody you like and, and in the domain that you are looking for, are you open to advise me? And most people will say yes. Um, you know, and, uh, and that's what you are looking for, is that the relationship and then finding and, uh, and not always looking for the, you know, the, uh, the visible stars, but recognizing that the universe of startups is plenty of other stars. And bringing them together is what's going to make your advisory board a successful one. So the ideal advisory board then are people that you know and trust and have a great relationship with. You'd try to get one general advisor who's your go-to person yeah. e every day or every week mm -hmm. and then fill it in with two or three others who might have deep domain experience on a particular topic? That, that works for me. Um, and, and I think that's a balanced advisory board. It's really important to have the advisory board to be balanced. Uh, in the, you mentioned that I've been in advisory boards myself uh, in my previous roles, and, um, and what I have found uh, in some instances it worked really well when the CEO 
of those companies that I was I was working with um, were using the advisory board as sounding uh, advisory boards. Um, I think that's really valuable. But if you are using the advisory board just to have a prestige of names that you are never going to talk to uh, during the life cycle of this advisory board, I don't think that's that useful. And uh, so you need to, I think, um, be very careful about the star uh, <laughs> chasing a syndrome that I have seen in some instances. So there's a board of directors. Yes. And there's an advisory board. Yes. So the board of directors is normally your investors or financial yes. investors. Yes. The advisory board may not be an investor. They're uh, just there to help. Indeed. I mean, in my case, actually, yes, yeah, some of the, uh, my advisory boards are investors and some of them are here to help. And, uh, and, and the board of directors are indeed all investors. That's kind of the criteria I choose when I created the company that they have to be an investor in order to be in the, advi in the, in the, in the board of directors. So you get different advice from yes. board of directors versus an advisory board. Absolutely. And, uh, and very interestingly is that it's kind of a two different universes sometimes. Uh, and again, it goes back to being judged versus not judged. Um, you know, the board of directors, even if in this case I am also the chairman of that board, you know, you still are in the, in the context of performance, okay? And um, and 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 the the information you convey and everything is kind of you know tainted by that lens. Uh, in the advisory board, you are just there to take advice. Uh, so so with that bias taken away, uh, you know. Uh, the um, the scope is very broad, and and therefore you get a much higher quality input. Right. Well, this has been a fascinating conversation. Uh, I really appreciate appreciate you being here. My pleasure, and uh, I wish uh, all the existing and tomorrow startups uh, best of success, and surround themselves with most complimentary advisory board members. <laughs> Thank you very much, and that's Google Root Access. We'll be with you again very soon. Thank you.